Hey guys, we're taking a morning ride. We're checking out a new one from Gazelle. This is the Ultimate C380. It's one of four models that Gazelle categorizes under the Ultimate category. They have the C8, which uses an eight-speed Shimano Nexus internally geared hub. They have the C380, which you, which you see here, and it uses an NVO low 380 degree gear ratio continuously variable transmission. So this thing is very fancy. It weighs a little bit more uh, than a, just a traditional derailleur, which you can see on the Ultimate T10. That's a 10 speed. Okay, so if we think about uh, maybe the gear ratios here, the C8 with the Shimano Nexus, that's like 11 to 36 kind of a, a gear range. And the, the T10 that has Shimano Dior, that's also 11 to 36 and it has 10 speeds. And then they have the T10 Plus, which uses a speed pedelec motor. So it goes a little bit faster, 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. And that one has 11 to 42 gear ratio. So this one actually is, is equivalent to that Dior XT on the T10 Plus. It's really nice. It's a really wide range of pedal cadence options, which is wonderful if you're climbing hills or maybe you're trekking. And they do kind of categorize this continuously variable transmission as like the trekking model so it can handle uh, up to 85 newton meters of torque. Now this motor only offers up to 65 newton meters of torque, so you're, you're covered. Like this is a little bit more durable. They kind of categorize this as sort of like a trekking bike maybe or touring. You've got a suspension seat post right here, only 40 millimeters of travel, postmodern. This thing has preload adjust in the base I think you just use like a little hex wrench you can twist to the right or the left there is a little bit of stiction which means it doesn't it doesn't slide like perfectly smoothly buttery it's it's a little bit more and it kind of jerks into position or out of position especially if it's cooler and today is a cooler morning so you know that's the case it warms up a little bit over time and when you set it for your body weight it works great plus this saddle this is the uh, Lore Gel from Selly Royale. I mean, it is really, really soft and comfortable, a little bit wider, very nice setup there. And then up here, we have another 40 millimeter. This is suspension fork, non-adjustable. Again, not like the heavy duty suspension on this bike, but it's better than nothing. It's really clean. It's really sleek looking. And then it allows for a lighter weight aluminum alloy fork. It's like a blade. So it's pretty aerodynamic here. You'll notice that this is black and a lot of the other uh, just sort of hardware, whether it's the aluminum alloy fenders or these mid-dish rims right here, the spokes, the hub, even this nice little aluminum alloy belt cover that we have right here. And this is a, it's kind of a guard on that belt ring up there. Really nice setup. Just love how everything is black and especially this rear rack. This thing is awesome. You can see how they bent it in to act as like a pannier blocker so that your bags won't swing back and forth and make, make contact with these tires. They used not really standard gauge tubing on the main supports. They have it right here. That's what I consider standard gauge, and that's the most compatible with like clip-on panniers and stuff. But I think this isn't so wide that it won't uh, limit your options. I still think you'll be able to clip a lot of panniers on here. You can also use the bungee option that a lot of panniers have so that they won't be bouncing around. They have an integrated double strap bungee right here with this cool hook thing. So it's just super fast, just boom, and you've got your jacket or whatever secured. It's aluminum alloy and it's got this integrated four LED light back here. This thing is awesome. I'm gonna show it later, but it's just really neat to see how well protected it is and how visible it is with the side cutouts. I really think that the rear rack is great. It also provides some support for that rear fender. These fenders are like 60 millimeters wide, aluminum alloy, and with that extra support, as well as this one that both attach that rack, they don't rattle a whole lot. It's really nice. And then the final, kind of the icing on the cake for this rack is that it's rated 27 kilograms. So it's like, you know, most racks, it's like eh, 50, 55 pounds. This one's like 60 pounds. So it's, it's, even, it's even sturdier. A lot of options there. So you come back to this maybe trekking uh, or touring platform. I, I think you, you'd get a lot of comfort. You'd get some efficiency. Of course, you got safety. You've got these reflective sidewall stripes. You've got integrated lights. This one also has side windows. It's 50 lux. This is blue line. It's got the reflector and it's up high. So it still points where you're steering because it's mounted to the handlebar versus way down here. You're just going to be a little bit more visible. I really feel like it's an awesome bike. The one trade-off is that you're given the Bosch Power Pack 500. Now they do have like the 625, it's even higher capacity, 
Um, maybe they did that because this bike comes in three different frame sizes. I'm on the middle size right now, sort of the medium size. Uh, they all come in step through. So you can't really get a high step version if you want the Enviolo, and that's the C380 that they brand this particular platform as. So, you know, maybe it's just because they wanted to make the, the frame extra stiff, and if you got too long of a battery pack, that wouldn't work. I like the top mount design, and I wanted to show you this before putting the battery pack on. There's like this aluminum alloy, probably like a reinforcement strength platform, and then they've got this like angled sort of tubing, really clean like welds. I'm sure this is hydroformed and stuff, but it just looks really nice. It's a little bit fatter, and there is a little bit of frame flex on this, but not a whole lot. It's actually pretty pretty good. And then they've got this like memory foam at the bottom here. So it, it dampens any vibration. It's pretty quiet. Um, so the bike with this battery pack on, with its plastic cover and everything you see here, all the you know fenders and the rack and lights and everything like that, 63.4 pounds, which isn't super lightweight, but it kind of has everything you need. But it's only the 500 watt hour battery pack you know, which offers something like 30 to 70 miles per charge, uh, according to the actual range estimator tool on the Bosch display panel. So to me, it's like, I, I guess, you know, if I'm, if I'm riding in uh, eco or tour, maybe even a little bit of sport and you're getting 50 miles or something like that, is that enough for touring or trekking? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't actually do a whole lot of that, but to me that means like really long range and lots of cargo and maybe even dual battery setup. This just doesn't offer that, but it does at least come with the Bosch four amp battery charger. This thing weighs like 1.7 pounds, four amps. It fills very quickly. It's got the proprietary charging plug. It plugs right into the battery pack or the side of the frame. I like that this is up high, so you don't have to bend way down to plug it in. It's nice, it doesn't need any extra dongles or anything like that. And then this, sometimes, you know, it's gotta line it up to really get it in there. That's, it's a little complaint, but it's something, you know, I like it when it just clicks right in, no problem. Look at how beautifully all the cables and everything are integrated on this bike. It's super, super clean, totally purpose-built. You can see some welds right here again, coming down to uh, strength. And then we have the battery locking core on the left-hand side of the frame. And you do have to, like open it up. See how there's just like a square block right there? It's not angled. You can't just like slap the battery on. You have to have the key. So coming back to the battery with the cover, this is 6.9 pounds with the plastic cover. And if we flip it around, there's the charging port. So I'm gonna have to carefully line this up like that. And see, I can't just push it. I have to actually twist the key and then it drops in a little bit and it clicks and there's actually like a button here. So if I was taking the battery off, I'd have to unlock it and then press this button to release it. And that's pretty handy for the underside mounting batteries. And I really don't love those because, I mean, you look at the fender and everything here, it's just tight for a lot of bikes. And then you, you have this like longer wheelbase. So one of the things Gazelle said for, for this model is that they matched the head tube angle with the seat tube angle. They tried to make this more upright and they, they brought the wheels together a little bit. So it's not super long. I think it's like 73 inches when I did the measurements and stuff. And that's including the fender. And for a bike with 700C wheels, like 28 inch, that's pretty good. So it is a little bit more upright. We've got this adjustable angle stem, negative 10 to 60 degrees. So you can really raise it up, which I've done here. This little sloped back, swept back handlebar, very nice. Um, just creates that like comfortable body position if you want, or of course you can angle it down if you need to. And then the three sizes, you really get the geometry dialed in. Um, and I, I want to compliment these grips here. I've never seen these before. They might, might be proprietary or something. They're kind of that faux leather stitch design. They actually feel really soft, very comfortable, and they're locking. There's a little bolt in the bottom. I am not used to seeing that. Normally, these like faux stitched leather ergonomic grips are kind of the cheap ones that they just, you know, the online only bikes have. And they look kind of nice. Usually they're like kind of a leather color, a brown. But to see these really premium locking ones, I mean, that's a step up and they actually feel really nice. I know you're not here, you can't feel it for yourself, but I just wanted to compliment that. And then push the battery the rest of the way in. There we go. So I, I didn't actually hear it click, but the good thing is because it's got that first release step, 
this battery is not gonna tumble out. And again, it's, it's on the top, so there's not gravity working against you. I really like this setup. Now we have this key from AXA. We can take it back here to this Defender. This is a frame lock, um, sometimes called a cafe lock because you can lock the bike pretty easily and then just dash into the cafe and no one's gonna be able to just ride your bike away. I mean, they could drag it away, but at 63.4 pounds, you know, probably not gonna happen that much. And when I twist the key, there we go. See the metal rod, like, it vanishes, and now the bike is rideable. One drawback, in my opinion, though, is that the key is now locked on the bike. So every time you stop, you've kind of got to lock the bike up, or someone could come tamper with this and steal your key or some lock your bike for you. So to me, I, I there are some other frame locks like this from... I don't know, Abus and stuff, and where you actually can take the key out. It does come with a couple keys, so I don't know, keep that in mind. And this does also add some weight. So between the Enviolo, which has this like traction fluid inside and these orbs, these metal orbs, and creates this continuously variable transmission where there's no steps. You can shift at standstill. You can even shift while the bike is in operation, but I find that when motor power is being applied, it doesn't shift super smoothly. So kind of a trade-off there. Very durable, very quiet. You'll notice there's no derailleur hanging down here to get bumped and stuff, but it adds some weight. So between that, you know, the kickstand, the metal fenders, the frame lock and stuff, it's a little bit heavier, but I feel like back to the, the frame, the way they laid it out, they kept the battery as low as possible here in the down tube, nice and hidden, beautiful. And then the motor right there at the bottom bracket. So this is the performance line motor from Bosch and it weighs about 7.05 pounds. Again, it offers up to 65 Newton meters of torque, which is pretty good. It's rated at 250 watts nominal. One of the things I really like about the performance line, to me, this is this is almost like one of the most perfect motors for city or touring type of riding. This motor, it gives you up to 120 RPM support, meaning you can pedal at 120 strokes per minute, and the motor can actually support you up to that speed. Whereas the active line motor, that's the lowest end in the Bosch lineup, it only goes to 100 RPM. It gives you 40 Newton meters of torque. Active line plus, that one goes to like 105 RPM, but it only gives you 50 Newton meters of torque. So 65, that's like the sweet spot for me. It's light, it's efficient, it's pretty quiet. And then you get up to like the CX and the cargo line and the speed motors, which louder, it's a little bit heavier. It's also going to give you 85 Newton meters of torque, but it's gonna burn through that battery much faster. So the combination of 500 watt hours and you know this motor, it's it's excellent and they've kind of updated it and improved the design a little bit for 2020 2021 you can uh, because of this drive system and everything upgrade the display we're looking at the purion display here which is one of the more basic ones from bosch it doesn't have uh, an active usb charging port this is just for diagnostics over here it doesn't give you quite as many readouts it's not quite as big it's not removable you can swivel it a little bit to reduce glare We've got an on-off button right there on top, but we also have an on-off button way down here on the battery. And to me, that's interesting. There are a couple times where maybe I haven't ridden my bike for a while if it's a Bosch drive system, and some things like the display, I've, I've only seen this on the Intuvia, which is the bigger one that's center mounted. But I'll try to turn the bike on and then like the display comes on, but I can't change assist levels. I'll click like plus, plus, and it, instead of going up to eco, like you see here, it just, it goes up and then it goes right back. And I, I never know what's going on. Well, what you can do in those cases is turn the bike off and then you can turn it on using the battery pack. So if you find yourself struggling, if there's ever some sort of weird issue up here, um, start it from the battery pack like I just did and it seems to like maybe it awakes the battery up or something like that I don't, I don't really know they use really high quality cells Bosch has an excellent warranty they have this huge network of, of dealers that offer support and stuff so to for me it's like it's a very modular system all the stats and specs and everything I just mentioned are great but they also have one of the best controllers and what that means is, you know, you're, you're measuring your real wheel speed with this magnet and a little sensor over there, pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. And they even have shift detection. I don't think it applies so much when you have an internally geared hub or continuously variable CVT transmission like this, but still just really nice 
to kind of have the best. Like that's what you get from Bosch. They even have like smartphone app and stuff, which not compatible with the uh, Purion display over there. So you consider up upgrading to like the Kiox or the Intuvia, or they, they're even coming out with the Nyon from Europe, which is really cool. It's got like maps and other really fancy stuff, color, bigger display. So you're not locked out of those nicer options. And while we're back down here by the drivetrain, 24 tooth cog in the rear, 55 tooth chain ring up front. It does have that aluminum alloy guard. Uh, this thing is not gonna come off track because it has this center track design. So this is gates, carbon belt drive, very durable, more durable than chains. According to a lot of shops that I talk to, it's like doesn't have to be changed as frequently. And it's just quiet, it's really clean with that cover and everything. You'll notice I'm wearing jeans today and I'm, I'm not getting dirty, I'm not getting snagged or anything. So this bike is just ready to go. Maybe you're a commuter or something like that. And if we jump back to the, the frame for a second, you'll notice we don't have to have a slap guard because this belt is tight. Like there, there's no derailleur hanging down. There's, it's not like that thing's gonna be bouncing around, making noise or touching the frame at all. Um, but coming back to like having a belt, one of the things you do need is a cutaway frame. So you can see right here, you have to actually like open the frame and spread this to get the next belt on because there's no like cut in the belt itself. Um, and then you need this sliding dropout out here to, to sort of position and create some tension, the correct tension in the belt itself. I guess just worth considering, that's part of what makes these bikes a little more expensive or you know, the way they design the frames and stuff. For $39.99, about 4,000 bucks, this is a pretty good deal in my opinion. This is a very well done bike. I mean, I can't think of very many things I would change about it. They got the model cage bosses down here, the excellent rack that I already talked about. They got comfort kind of covered. Um, that suspension post does mean that your minimum saddle height is a little bit higher. So if you're someone who's struggling to kind of mount the bike and you know, obviously very approachable step through frame, but then actually sitting up on the saddle, you, you might might want to get rid of this and just get a, reg a regular rigid seat post that can come even lower. I've recorded the minimum saddle height with and without that suspension um, back at the side along with the width and height and ev everything else on this bike uh, as I do. I might consider swapping this out for like a Suntour NCX suspension post or a Thud Buster or like, you know body float kind of thing. 27.2 millimeter diameter on this, which is very, very standard. And they use a shim right here, this silver thing, to go to, I think, 29.8? Like, it's it's a very unique size. It's not very standard. So you don't want to lose that shim. You'll notice that we do need tools to adjust that, that clamp. We also need tools back here to do anything with the rear. And, and that's going to be kind of a big job if you do get a flat tire. Up front, we have quick release, which I guess is kind of nice. It's weird to have quick release on the front and nowhere else. Like for a minute, I was thinking, well, that's great. Like everything requires tools, which means if you're at a bike rack commuting, people aren't gonna be able to steal your stuff as easily, like steal your seat, but they could still steal your front wheel. So I, I, I don't quite get that. Coming back to the, the aero fork and how nice it looks and everything, these deep dish rims look really beautiful too. And we've got, 13 gauge thicker spokes in the rear, 14 gauge up front, which provides a little bit of flex and comfort, maybe reduces weight just a smidge. And then we've got the Schwabi Energizer Plus 50 cam rated e-bike tires with G-Guard 5, so puncture protection, which means hopefully you won't be in a position where you ever have to, you know, take that rear wheel off and replace the inner tube. Eventually you have to replace the tire. You can get some help from, from your local shop because Gazelle sells pretty much exclusively through dealers, which is great. We also have the Addix E, so it's a special rubber design for e-bikes. We got the reflective sidewall stripe that I mentioned before. And these are 28 by 1.75. They're the same tire uh, that were, were on the Montague M-E1 that I looked at the other day. So it seems like a pretty popular tire for fancy e-bikes, one that seems to be well proven. Um, Gazelle, this is the Royal Dutch Gazelle. So they're like highly regarded in Europe. Uh, and in the Netherlands, they're part of uh, this subset of companies that the government recognizes as being like really high performing and having some level of environmental stewardship and having been around for like a hundred plus years. They're, they're doing a great job. 
it's neat that, you know, if you look at this paint, this is really beautiful paint. The crest, the accents and stuff. Um, they, they put their bikes and, and their paints and stuff through a lot of rigorous testing because it rains a lot in the Netherlands. And so this is UV tested and saltwater tested and the hardware is all stainless and stuff. It's designed to be really uh, reliable and long lasting. They have two colors. This is like the satin olive. It looked glossy on the website, but in person it's kind of this satin. And then they have what they call mallard blue, sort of a dark blue. That one might look really nice uh, when you come back to these black accents, I think the black accents will sort of fade away a little bit and it'll, it'll look more cohesive, like one, one thing, versus this is a little bit choppy, especially with that, that black cover up there. And if we come down here for a second, we got standard 170 millimeter crank arms, these kind of plastic pedals with rubber traction. They seem to work pretty well. Nice reflectors and stuff. And then of course, the bell and the brakes. The brakes are a real highlight on this bike. So these are three finger Shimano hydraulic brake levers. They do have adjustable reach, so you can bring them in or out depending on how big your hands are, how long the fingers are. Just get that really dialed in. And then if we come down to the rotors, we've got 180 up front, which is great. That's really big. It's gonna cool quickly. It gives you a great mechanical advantage. And a lot of times when you're stopping on a bicycle, your weight shifts forward. So a lot of the stopping happens with that front wheel. So nice to see 180 up there. In the back, 160, which is kind of acceptable. It's what I would expect for a city bike, uh, which is kind of what I consider this. It's, um, you know, could be a little bit bigger, but when you think about how crowded it gets back here and all the bolts and everything. Maybe they just felt like, no, we don't really need it. This is good enough. Surprisingly though, they have quad piston calipers, both in the rear and up front. So that spreads out your braking surface and it just gives you uh, a, a greater surface area that's gonna cool a little bit faster and give you more grab. So these brakes are really nice. I uh, That was unexpected to me. It was like, wow. I, quad piston calipers. I'm used to seeing those on like downhill bikes and stuff when you're really going for it. Uh, so nice to have those here. I put the charger away and I think it's time to turn this thing on. So we already did it before. I'm going to turn it on from down here just for fun. But otherwise the power button on top, we have a walk button below and plus and minus. So walk mode lets you slowly move the bike. And given that it's you know, 63.4 pounds, you might have the rack loaded up and perhaps you need to walk through grass or it's crowded and you just feel like it's safer. Or maybe you have a child seat back here. Yep has this really great maxi that the new one clamps on to the sides. I'm almost positive it will work with this rack and I could see that being a, a great setup. You'll notice that the seat, even though the, the frame, they tried to make it sort of shorter, you're not gonna collide. There's enough space back here to fully load that up. So anyway, walk mode, it's a great feature. And I think it only works if you're in one of the four assist levels. So the first assist level here is Eco, gives you 55% assist. And here it's saying 67 miles. I've already been riding a little bit here. So normally it would say like 70 miles. And then Tour, uh, 120% support. So when I say percentage, it's like you're giving a certain amount of power and it's matching you plus 20%. So 120% here, 41 mile range Sport, 200% support, 32 mile range estimate. And then turbo, the highest level of assist, 29 mile range, 300% assist. That's where you get that of torque. And again, all these different display options, some of them uh, syncing with like heart rate monitors and stuff if you're using this bike to, to get exercise and the Bosch smartphone app, very cool. I noticed that the way this display works, so we're, we're up in turbo, if we power cycle it, and I love how quickly it goes, um, it starts it off every time. So you're gonna have to click, click, click to get back up there, but it leaves your light selection. So I have the lights on right now. And we have that headlight. Now you can see it with the side windows and that 50 lux. It's pretty nice light. Again, I just love how high it is and just where it's positioned. It, it might create some issues if you try to get um, the Intuvia display or mount your phone here, but I feel like there, there are ways around that. You might have to mount your phone to the side, so just keep that in mind. And then the rear light, this is this is a really fancy one. It's from Herman's, it's got those four LEDs, and I just feel like it's well protected, it's well positioned. I, I, I love this light. I, I haven't really seen anything like it before, and I just think it's fantastic. So then back up to the display, we have our current speed up top, 
Um, down here we've got the light icon and we've got this five bar battery infographic, which leaves something to be desired. I'd prefer 10 bars or battery percentage, but since we have range estimate, it sort of fills in for that. So, you know, again, we go to Eco, even though we, we've got four or five bars here, now it says 67 miles where it said 70 before, it's just a lot more precise. So I appreciate that. If we hold the minus button, this section of the display changes its readout. So it goes from range estimate to current level of assist, which shows anytime you click the buttons anyway. So I, I don't love leaving it on that. If we hold minus again, now it says trip distance and total distance. So I think we can clear those by holding plus and minus simultaneously, although can't clear total because that's the odometer. So, okay, anyway, the other thing you can do is hold minus and tap power and we go from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and it's gonna change our um, odometer and trip distance reading as well. It's very cool. And if we hold the plus button, we can turn off the lights and that might be nice if it's like a beautiful, you know, moonlit sky and you just don't wanna wreck your night vision or you feel like, oh, maybe I'm saving some power or I don't wanna blind people. It's neat that they let you do that because some of the displays, they lock it. Like I think some of Trex displays, it's, lights are on all the time. And that, that may also be the case with the Ultimate T10 Plus. That's the Speed Pedelec. I think that's a requirement in Europe that if it's a faster bike like that, that the lights always need to be um, on. So. There you go, I think that's a, a good run through. Over on this side, we've just got the twist grip. If you twist it forward like this, that's like a low gear for climbing a hill and that's why they have a little you know, icon that shows a hill and if you bring it back, that's like going downhill or going faster. But of course, it's a slower, harder cadence. And I love that we can shift gears right here. You know, we aren't even moving and we're shifting gears and it's mechanical. You see the little gray thing going back and forth back there? So that's what's creating the pivot and adjusting your rear wheel speed ratio with the continuously variable transmission. And again, it's just, it's adding that weight, five, six pounds compared to the T10. Um, still, maybe even a little bit, slightly heavier than the C8, but that's just how it goes with these internally geared hubs. One thing I wanna comment on is there's no window readout on this. Like some of the other older new Vinci, like N380, they have a display that actually shows like a little guy going up on a bike and it, it's more dynamic. To me, this is really clean and allows the bell to be closer and I'm used to it at this point. So I'm, I'm really not looking down like, where's the guy on the hill? I'm just like, I need to be easier or I need to be harder. I don't even think about it, I just twist. So I guess this is okay, but I wanted to comment that it's a simpler, less dynamic readout. It doesn't have the, the little indicator window like some of the other gear shifters do. Um, with that said, I feel like maybe it's time to go for a ride, but uh, on last highlight here for me was this adjustable length kickstand. It's tool free, so you can reach down here and there's like a little button on the bottom and you can actually slide this up or down. That was really handy for me because I love to get the bikes perfectly straight when I'm doing photos and you know filming and stuff. So being able to do that without using tools was great. It's a 20 millimeter mount right there, which is another standard uh, in the industry. We stow it and uh, maybe we'll hop on this thing. I'm gonna turn the lights on again by holding plus. Take it up to turbo so you can hear the motor. Again, I feel like this is a quieter motor. Oh, and I should say, it's kind of neat. Now when you, you cycle backwards with the Bosch motor, it actually, it moves the drivetrain. So that could be handy for doing maintenance and stuff. Um, kind of neat to see that. There, there's, there's definitely some friction there too. It's not like it's just gonna spin out of control. And when we walk the bike backwards, that's another thing I think about. You're not gonna get pedal locked because there's plenty of space right here. It's just it's just done right. Like these guys having been around so long and actually selling e-bikes for so long, I just feel like they nailed it. They they really thought through everything and the bike's great. So here we go. It's near instant response. So it starts and stops super quickly, which is just so nice. Uh, maybe the you're at a traffic signal and you know, you've got to stop and you weren't able to shift gears. No problem. You can shift gears easily while you're st stood still and then you need to go and it just takes right off. I mean, it's fantastic. Really, uh, I really like the, the Bosch drive systems in general. I, I trust them 
but this is one of the, the nicer ones for me because it's so quiet. I'm going to go to a higher pedal cadence, which tends to raise the volume because the motor's operating quickly. We'll see how that sounds. So I actually outpaced it there and I could hear it going like because I, I was like at or above 120 RPM. And normally, like if this was the CX from Bosch, it would be like, Wee! And you can hear some of my other reviews to see what that sounds like. I think we have covered the T10 and the T10 Plus, and the Plus is where the speed pedelec is. So I also like to do this test, see how well it tracks, see how stable it is. So remember, this is a step through frame, which can be a little bit more flexy. And there are times where bikes like this, especially if they weigh more, if the weight isn't distributed very well, the handlebars and stuff will start to jiggle, like speed wobble. And this thing's doing fine, even at pretty low speeds right here. I'm gonna do some shifting. One of the, the drawbacks, again, with most e-bikes is that if you're shifting while you're riding, there's gonna be some sort of like mashing if it's a, a derailleur, or in this case, the extra pressure makes it very hard to shift, you know, because the cables are trying to pull against the motor. So it's best to sort of stop pedaling for a second and then shift, which is sort of non-intuitive to me. Um, normally you want to have at least a little bit of movement when you're shifting gears to help the derailleur move the chain to the next cassette, like sprocket. In this case, it's just different. You just, it's easiest and best to shift like when you aren't pedaling takes a minute to get used to. So here we are at a really like high gear, really slow cadence. And uh, again, very quiet. Bike's riding really smoothly. Still getting 65 Newton meters of torque. So I don't need to overexert my legs. I'm just zipping up to speed. I was at, you know, 24 kilometers per hour right now. Here's a big hill. I'm gonna shift it down to like a middle gear go and let's try climbing this hill doing just fine I didn't have to stand up or anything we're almost at the top very very nice that's what the e-bike is all about right there I do have a knee injury so for me to be able to climb that hill in a medium gear i mean i'm sorry there's no window here to show but this is probably like three or four or something out of ten it's you know it's not the it's not the high gear for going really fast it's it's helping me climb but it's not the lowest gear either we turn this just a little bit more we'd be at the let's see there was quite a bit there still for the lowest gear to me that's great you don't always have time to shift gears and it's nice to just have the bike do its thing okay guys we're in the highest level of assist i'm going to start out with a really high cadence just to try to maximize motor noise. And then I'm gonna go for speed, I'm gonna ride through the grass, so you can hear the motor, you can hear the fenders, anything else that might be rattling. So far I've been really impressed with the bike. Um, it's just, it's very responsive, it's doing what I'd expect, and it's so quiet, I love that. Now I'm going to point you forward so you can see the suspension in action up there. Can't really see it as well as a normal crowned suspension fork, but uh, still a little bit of travel. Fenders are doing a great job keeping me dry. And then, I don't know if you can quite see it here, but this is the, that's the suspension seat post. And it does have 
uh, like I was saying, a little bit of stiction happening here. It seems like it just, it's like release, unrelease. It's not quite as smooth and little bumps might not activate it all the way, but it, it still, it still does a pretty good job. You know, if you hit an unexpected bump and you're, you know, sitting down, you're paying attention to traffic, it's just going to take, you know, reduce the strain you feel in your neck and you're getting a headache or shoulders. It's a nice setup that way. And the geometry and stuff is really to my liking. Okay guys, I just wanted to get the third person shot. So I've set the camera down. I'm going to go hop on the bike. Pretty fun. I'm glad I came to this park because it's quiet and I can really appreciate how quiet this bike is. And you might be riding it in a city or whatever, but when whenever you actually get out into nature a little bit, it's just nice to feel like you're on a regular bike. And even though, you know, it's 63.4 pounds, you kind of forget that once the bike is, is rolling. And especially because of how like peppy this motor can be. Fantastic. The braking, no problem. One hand over here, and that's that 180 millimeter rotor with quad piston calipers. Really no fender rattling. I heard a little bit of like clunk, 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 and maybe that was the battery, or it might have even been the suspension up there a little bit, but just super quiet. I mean, this thing is luxury. I I love it. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of this bike. I'm very impressed with what Gazelle has done. They continue to refine their products and they're using the best, you know, Bosch is, it's at the top of the list for me. So for the full written review on this, including all the specs, all the measurements that I do by hand, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. There is a comparison tool and you can compare this to some of the other Gazelle models or Bulls or Specialized or Trek or any of the kind of leaders that tend to use those nicer mid-drive motors. Um, there's also a forums and of course comments on YouTube where you can share your thoughts and stuff and see what other real life people think. I have these bikes for just a couple days. I borrow them from shops or companies send them. And I do want to thank the folks over at Reckless Shipyards in North Vancouver. Uh, they helped me get this bike set up and especially Tony really walked me through it a little bit and was so excited about it because it's been a popular one for them. I'm doing my best to to give you a, a deeper perspective and one that's not super promotional, but it's still, it's limited. So that's why I built the community and I try to leave comments and everything as open as possible. I genuinely care about you guys. I hope you're having a great kind of winter season. I love you and we'll see you on the next one. Ride safe.